as you have just been notified, um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so keep that in mind if you'd like to ask any questions. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, APA Virginia is um, very happy to um, help out with the log logistical side of this MAPC webinar. Um, I think we have a really informative webinar ahead of us with presenters that we're very grateful for joining and contributing. Um, the CM number for this webinar is 9261217. I will be reposting that in the ch chat box as soon as we get started. Um, <clears throat> we really do encourage questions, but just to help our presenters um, keep tabs of any inquiries, please submit using the Q&A feature versus the chat box feature. Um, and you may also, um, once we're in the Q&A portion of the webinar, you may also um, use the raise hand feature to request to be unmuted um, to ask your question live. But um, other than that, our website is listed here, or um, I'm sorry, our, our website is not listed here, but um, planning at APA Virginia um, dot com has a page for MAPC um, with other links, and I will also be sharing the YouTube link to um, the um, YouTube channel, which has which will have this recording. And Calvin, she's going to send you the link. Yeah, you yeah um, she's going to so, promote you up. I got to go. Um, <laughs> so, without further ado, I will pass it over to David, who will hand or, handle introductions. But um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Hello, everybody. My name is um, David Dahlstrom, and welcome to the Zoning Checkup um, webinar. We're very pleased to be here today. Um, this is my first webinar, although I've been a planner for many, many years. Um, so we're having a little bit of technical issues with this. So bear with us today, please. Um, we're still trying to get one of our our um, panelists uh, uploaded as well. So I just want to do a um, a quick um, overview of of our panelists today. Um, at first, we're going to have Joe Griffiths. He's the manager at our um, Maryland Department of Planning Local Assistance and Training section, and he's going to give a brief introduction. I'll let him introduce himself. My name is David Dahlstrom, and I'm a regional planner with the uh, Maryland Department of Planning. I work in the Upper Shore um, region, and um, I've been a planner for over 30 years. I have a master's degree from Florida State um, University, and I worked uh, at the Florida Department of Community Affairs for a number of years and a number in South Florida Regional Planning Council in Hollywood, Florida. And for the last 10 years, I've been um, at the department. Another panelist we have is Joe Rogers, who's also a colleague of mine. He's a regional planner with the Department of Planning, and he works in the Western um, Maryland area. He's been um, a planner since um, 2020. He worked in Western Maryland, which is Allegheny, Garrett, and Washington counties. He's a graduate of Frostburg um, State University, has a Bachelor of Science in Urban and Regional Planning. After his graduation, he worked for 14 years with the city of Frostburg, and uh, more recently, um, he's been working at the Maryland Department of, of Planning, and Joe has um, extensive experience working day-to-day -day operations, um, planning and zoning, permit review, code enforcement at, at the city level. So we're happy to have Joe with us, and I've been honored to be working with him on this project. And then um, we have two special guests. Hopefully we can get both of them on the line. Um, Kathleen Billmeyer was former town manager of the town of Galena. It's a town that's about 40 minutes away from where I am in Centerville, Maryland, um, Queen Anne's County. She's in Kent County. Town probably has about 500 people, five, 600 people in it. Um, Kathleen was the planning and zoning code enforcement officer uh, for Galena for four and a half years, 614 is population. She also worked on um, the zoning ordinance amendments, the comprehensive plan update, 
um, a zoning ordinance for fire hydrants and backyard chickens, big issue, and also the schedule of fees. Um, Kathleen has also worked on grants. Um, she got grants in over $1 million for the town. She's been a pleasure to work with. I'm glad she could join us today. And we also um, are inviting Calvin um, Bonenberger Jr. He's the town administrator for the town of Rising Sun that's up in Cecil County. He's been um, um, involved in the past 15 years with municipal um, planning, but 40 years he's been in um, local government. He served as um, the borough manager in Pennsylvania. He was director of code enforcement and planning. Um, he's also worked in land development. He's a state licensed wastewater treatment operator. He's a fire chief. He's been assistant fire marshal, emergency management. Um, he's worked on Calvin works on everything. He's very, he has a very comprehensive understanding of local government and has very keen technical skills. And I've I've been working with him for the last several years, and he's he's been a pleasure to work with. So I'm glad to have these panelists um, to work alongside with. So um, with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over. I think I need to start sharing my screen. Is that right, Jillian? Yes. All right. Share it. And let's see, that doesn't seem like it's the first slide. So I went um, went through the panelists. I'm David Dahlstrom. We had Joe Rogers, Kathleen Bilmeyer, and Calvin Bonenberger. Um, I guess I will go through just the outline of what our webinar will talk about. We'll talk about the function of our local assistance and training. Joe will Joe um, Griffiths will do that. Then um, we'll get into the purpose of the zoning checkup. You know what this is all about. We also have a series of poll questions. We're going to start with five questions, just to kind of find out who you are, and then we have one towards the end of the of this seminar. Uh, we hope you'll. Um, help us out. We're trying to you know, get some feedback, more like a peer review um, on this presentation. This is a new for us. And so um, we, we'd like your help on this in the chats and such. Then Joe um, Rogers and I will give a, a history of the zoning checkup, you know, how we got involved with this and how this came about. And then Kathleen and Calvin will give the local government perspectives, you know, their experience and how this um, can be a benefit and, and you know some of the challenges that they've um, encountered. And then I'm gonna give um, a sample of the actual zoning checkup, um, what the document is and, and how and how it's intended to work. And then we haven't quite launched this yet, so then we'll talk about the next steps um, and then we'll take final questions. I will say that if you do have questions, you can put those in the chat. And after we get done with each section, what we'll do is we'll ask Jillian to help us um, pull those out, maybe take one or two of those questions after each section. And if we can't get to those, then we'll, we can follow up at the end. And then you can also ask your questions at the end. So, I don't mean to um, interrupt, but please put those in the Q&A box if possible. Sorry, Q&A box. <laughs> no problem. All right. um, I'll probably say chat. So when I say chat, I mean Q&A box. All right, so I'm turning it over to Joe Griffith. Thanks, David. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, you know, my name is Joe Griffith. I'm the local assistance and training manager for the Maryland Department of Planning. I've also previously worked for Loudoun County, Virginia, Department of Planning and Zoning, so I do have experience in a couple places in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, one of my primary roles is overseeing the regional planning program for the department. We have six regions around the state and um, three satellite offices in addition to our Baltimore office. Uh, David and Joe are two of our regional planners. Uh, the regional planners have a wide variety of, of jobs and responsibilities from local plan review and administering uh, various uh, of the state's smart growth initiatives. Uh, they also provide direct technical assistance to local jurisdictions, particularly smaller ones. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on with today's webinar. And then just overall development of educational uh, that can be used uh, by jurisdictions, which is another thing we're going to be talking about today. So the idea of this webinar and this resource uh, really came from David. 
uh, who's leading the webinar because starting in 2018 and going through the next few years, maybe even before that, David uh, really went around to a lot of jurisdictions in his region, which is the Upper Eastern Shore of Maryland, and was providing uh, zoning, what we're calling now zoning checkup assistance, uh, this performance guide uh, for smaller jurisdictions to help them um, improve, streamline, make sure all their ducks in were in the row for their zoning ordinance. And he did this over and over and over again. And, and we started talking about the idea, well, why don't we make this more of an on-demand resource? Um, while we'll still provide that direct technical assistance, we can make something that, will, that jurisdictions can potentially use on their own as well. And then recently we uh, added Joe Rogers, who also be presenting later, uh, and he's been providing uh, help with David as he developed this resource. So we actually haven't published this resource yet, as Dave mentioned. So you all are getting the, the first look at it, at it outside of the uh, outside of the department. And the last thing I'll say is, while David, Joe, Kathy, and Calvin um, will be addressing this issue, talking today from a uniquely Maryland perspective, because we all work in the state. We believe this resource and the guidance that they're going to share today uh, apply to the entire Mid-Atlantic region and even outside of the Mid-Atlantic region. So we're happy to have you uh, here today, and I'm really excited to hear what David, Joe, Kathy, and um, uh, Calvin have to share. So thank you. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, just wanted to go over the um, purpose of the, the zoning checkup. Um, well, I want to restate that the zoning checkup is meant to be for small and rural jurisdictions. I work in small rural jurisdiction region. A lot of the jurisdictions don't have the resources that other places do. Um, you know, it's often a, a challenge. Um, and so I tried to put together a resource where you know, it's intended for small and um, jurisdictions, but there's nothing in here that couldn't be applied in a, in a larger jurisdiction. But typically you have the professional staff and the resources to be able to do this, you do it anyway. Um, but in a small town where you don't have, um, you know, maybe a dedicated planning staff, um, you just have the clerk, um, the planning issues tend to fall by the wayside because they just don't know. So this is intended for, for small towns, planning commissions, um, so that they can review their codes and, and even know what to ask us if they need assistance. Um, a lot of times I'll go visit the towns and they'll say, you know, thanks for coming out. We really have this issue. We need someone to, to help us out. You know, they don't have the resources. They don't know who to call. And so that's kind of how we got all started. So it's a it's it's intended for small towns. It's voluntary and it's intended for planning boards or planning commissions. I'm going to say planning boards, um, but I mean planning boards or planning commissions. Um, and it's for them to evaluate their zoning code, their zoning map for completeness and then consistency with the comprehensive plan. That's one of the requirements in Maryland is that your zoning is supposed to be consistent with your comprehensive plan. In the zoning checkup, it's a self-evaluation self tool, so local governments can look at it and address a, vi a variety of topics. Currently, we have four core topics, which we're going to focus on today, and then over the year, we're going to be adding um, other topics, and we'll get into that, and we can, and even putting this presentation together, I thought of one or two more that could be done. We're looking for your comments in the question and answers section or even in um, about maybe some topics that we missed or maybe that you experienced with that might be helpful that we could add to the list. Um, and then the, the zoning checkup, it, it encourages planning boards to evaluate their, you know, their official zoning map and their official zoning ordinance um, on an annual basis to make sure that their code is continuously up to date. When I've gone and visited these jurisdictions, there have been many amendments over the years and they're not in integrated into the into the base document. They have a hodgepodge of ordinances floating around, and not everybody has the same copies. Um, so it's very hard to know what the zoning code says when nobody has the original copy. Okay, so our 
we have um, the first poll question that we want to ask. Um, I'm going to find out who who's on the call. Um, is do you work in a public or private planning sphere? And Jillian's going to put the questions up here. So A would be you work for a public entity. B is a private. NA means um, no answer or not applicable. So if you wouldn't mind letting us know if you're state or local or private sector or maybe something else. Welcome, Calvin. I'm going to wait for it to just hit 75%. Particip okay, <laughs> there we go. And here are the results. All right, a lot of public sector folks. That's good. Okay, next question. If you answered one, which was public, where do you work? Do you work in a rural county, which is less than 50,000 people? And that's just a number we picked out. Small town, small city, less than 10,000. A town, less than 2,500. Or an urban county or, or a larger city, you know, greater than 50,000 if you're a county and greater than 10,000 if you're a, a, a town or a city or other. And I guess if you don't work, or if, if you're a private sector, you probably aren't going to answer it unless you are a consultant for a town. All right, so we've got a lot of folks that work for bigger, bigger, um, bigger jurisdictions. And I said maybe you, uh, maybe you do work with your small towns, even though you maybe work for a county. I know when I worked for a county, I was the basically the circuit rider for the smaller towns and did a lot of the technical assistance with them. Um, but some of the things in here um, you may find are applicable to to a larger um, jurisdictions. Maybe you're doing it, maybe you're not. Um, I can give um, war stories that, you know, larger jurisdictions don't always do this as well, but that's not the focus of our, our presentation today. So thank you. Next question. Are you a zoning practitioner? And that means, um, do you, do you um, work directly with the zoning code as part of your job description on a routine basis? whether you're a, um, a clerk or whatever, do you routinely work um, with the zoning code? Is that your job description? So yes, no, or no answer or not applicable. All right, that's good to know. We've got 80% um, um, that are zoning practitioners. So you're in the right place. And actually, we're glad we have you on board because we, we'd really like your feedback. Like I said, we're doing kind of a peer review with this. And you know, we'd like, like some input and feedback before we actually launch this thing. If we can make some adjustments, that would be great. So the last, the fourth poll question is, what is your connection to a planning commission or planning board? Do you provide um, technical assistance or administrative assistance? Are you a commissioner or a board member? Do you have some other connection, which is C, or no connection to planning boards or commissions? All right, 78% um, um, provide technical administrative assistance. So that's, um, that's good to know. Okay, next question. Question five, have you, you ever experienced updating a zoning code? Be yes, A, B, no, and C, not applicable or no answer. Yep, 
And if you have experienced updating a zoning code, you probably know how um, involved it is. And you know, zoning is a very complex issue. Um, and so we're trying to take some very complex issues and for lack of a better term, simplify them or at least make them understandable for maybe someone that's not um, have the experience that this group has. Um, but also maybe provide them with some background so that they can they can be a better partner when you do these updates um, with you. You can probably also share some of the stories that you had um, doing an update. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. You can send us an email. I have the email at the end of the presentation, or you can send it in the QA, put in this um, in this presentation and, and share with the group. But um, because we might have some topics that, you know, I haven't experienced everything. You guys maybe have experienced some unique things. And so it would be good if we could if we could get, um, you know, a broader range of topics and that we could discuss for other um, jurisdictions that may have similar issues that I might not, 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 may not have experienced yet. So thank you all for participating in the poll. Okay, the history of the zoning checkup. And like I said before, um, you know, I work, I work in a, um, a rural area. Um, you know, we provide at LAT, we provide technical assistance when requested, you know, local governments have to call us before we come knocking on their door. Um, I'd like to provide um, an overview of some of the observations that I've made when I visited or worked with uh, various jurisdictions, um, mapping issues, municipal boundary issues, lost ordinances, incomplete codes, you know, maybe references to other jurisdictions in their code. Um, you know, maybe they have circuit riders or new staff, or there's a, there's a variety of of issues that come up when I when I when I visited the town. Um, um, and so jurisdictions will contact me and we'll sit down and we'll start discussing what some of the challenges that they're they're um experiencing and how can i be of assistance and then through this process what i what i found is that you know there's some basic information i need so you know we don't as a state we're not a regulatory agency we don't regulate zoning when a local government makes a zoning change they don't send it to the state for review they don't give us a copy of their ordinance or uh, of the change when they change their zoning map. They don't um, notify us that they're making the change. They don't send us a copy of the map. They can, we encourage them, but they're not required to. But I often get um, calls sometimes decades after it's happened asking us if we have a copy of their ordinance or map, which oftentimes we don't. Um, and the locals have, you know, for for whatever reason, haven't been able to keep track of their own zoning code or map, or they've made um, changes. One of the planning commissioners may have saw something from a different town or a different county, and then they copy that into their code, but they also copy the numbering system from that code. So when it says C section 3.2.1, your code may not have a section 3.2.1 because that's from another jurisdiction and they developed a code that has a different numbering system. So those references or uh, references to other documents that may not be in this code, you know, they don't exist. Um, sometimes we've seen references to other jurisdictions or even other jurisdictions in other states where it's copied from another state. Um, you know, everybody does this. I mean, and what, what we see is that, you know, if someone's not helping some of these small jurisdictions that don't have um, a staff or looking at it, things can get out of whack pretty quick. Um, sometimes they do get consultant help, but, you know, consultant comes and consultant goes and, you know, sometimes it doesn't always get, um, get fixed. Um, I sometimes I go into a jurisdiction and I'll I'll sit at the table 
and I will notice that they have a zoning map on the wall. And the zoning map will say draft done. And it won't be signed. And I'll ask the planner or the clerk about it. And they'll say, yeah, our, our consultant prepared that and they gave it to us. Well, they prepared it before the public hearing. Then it was adopted. But nobody sat down and said, well, now you guys have to actually sign this document, um, take the word draft on it off of it. And oftentimes what you'll see is that if they have a website, and most of my jurisdictions, I'd probably say it's almost 50-50, don't have a website. They don't have the capability to do that. But if they do, a lot of times they'll go on the website and the on the map on the website will say draft. And so what I what I'll suggest to this group is that when you're done with this presentation, if you have a website, go look at go look at your zoning map and see what it says. See if it says draft and see if it matches your official zoning map. And you might be surprised how often those don't match. And that's what the public is looking at when they go on their website. They'll, they're looking at this as being that's that's the zoning map. And it doesn't do any good to have a zoning map that's out of date. Um, so this is where, if you're even a large jurisdiction, this might be beneficial um, because these these things happen. Um, but you know, so we we'll work with them to adopt uh, adopt those changes. In the particular instance where the map was unsigned and said draft in their in their particular zoning code, the text said that their zoning was not effective until that map was signed and certified by the clerk with the stamp. So for how many years that draft map had stuck around, you know, technically, and you have to talk with your town attorney, is that that map or those changes were not effective. And that could create a real legal problem for these towns. And they don't have the resources to fight some of those things after the fact. So, so this is kind of the, the, the purpose and the history of it is just working out, work, working with these local governments. The other thing that I've noticed is that I'll look at their comprehensive plans and the comprehensive plans may have some really good language like we need to create walkable communities we need to have interconnected streets we need to have um, um complete streets or you know all these or a form-based code and you look you know all of these towns they're 100 percent euclidean zoning none of them know how to do form-based code they couldn't afford to do one um, you know, they haven't done a master plan. They haven't done all these um, other types of things. But um, I'm a really big fan of form-based codes. I've gone through the form-based code training that Virginia Tech offered in Alexandria. I've gone through smart code training a couple of times. I've, I've written smart codes. I've done um, design charrettes. I've created zoning based on charrettes and master plans. Um, typically, what what we do though is we create hybrids um or perhaps we just create one zoning category that's more form based or what we'll do is we will integrate some of the form based code concepts or graphics into the euclidean zone and if you have like e360 code you know it's very difficult to get graphics included in in that format um so um there's a lot of challenges out there and so that's kind of the history that that i'm going to talk about and now i'm going to um transfer the discussion over to Joe Rogers, who's going to give a little bit about the history that he's had with the zoning checkup. Yeah, thanks, David. And like David said, it's just a lot of dealing. I deal a lot with smaller towns and municipalities as well. And a lot of it are just local issues. If something will come up that, you know, uh, one of the hot topics recently has been the 5G cell towers, and they want to adapt some language into their existing ordinance. They may go back and have other amendments that you know need to be updated as well and we do a lot of board support um, so the planning commissions or boards uh, we want to make sure that everybody has the same information you know if they missed a meeting uh, they may not have a certain amendment or something that needs to be added into their uh, their official binder with their zoning ordinance and code so it's more about making sure all the uh, i's are dotted and t's are crossed and make sure that they're following their own ordinance um, like David said, sometimes you'll walk in and the map will need to be signed by either all the commissioners or just maybe the planning uh, board chair. So you have to make sure that, that the signatures are all present and, and accurate and that it reflects the language that's in their existing ordinance. 
they may have to have an official copy of their map uh, posted visible to the public, or it may read, you know, that an online version of the map suffices. So it's more of what's in their existing ordinances and then making sure that they're following that. So a lot of education and just training that goes along with it. Um, sometimes you'll get somebody who's doing this as a part-time planning director or liaison, and, you know, they may have other clerk responsibilities or administrative duties. So just keeping them, you know, up to date with current trends and, and new legislation to make sure that they're following their code and that they're following anything state-wise or uh, federal-wise, law-wise, to make sure that they, they get what they want out of their ordinance. If it's not working for you, it's working against you. So um, like David said, it's, it, it varies by town and, and the needs, but we're here to assist um, for Maryland. I know this is more Virginia-centered uh, today for the discussion, but I'm sure it exists across state lines. So uh, we provide a lot of day-to-day -day just general help. And then once we get in there, uh, it's mainly making sure that everything's in line and up to date with, with their existing code to make sure everything's running smooth. Okay, I just, um, I'll close by, by just saying that, you know, a lot of the places that we work for, even though Centerville, where I'm at right now, we're only about 30 miles as the crow flies from Annapolis, which is our state capital. Once we cross the Chesapeake Bay, it's a different landscape. And a lot of these towns, some of the towns, the town halls don't even have a bathroom. They don't have audio visual um, capabilities. So doing a PowerPoint, unless you're bringing your own data projector and stuff in there, you know, the room may not even be big enough to put a, a data projector. So we, you know, we really do have some challenges with technology. Um, you know, when I first got here, dial up, people still had dial up. You know, probably, some of them probably still do. 5G is unheard of. Um, electric vehicle charging stations, you're not going to find um, only but a handful. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of issues here that small towns do. So in this presentation, we have um, two components. We have the um, the zoning checkup, it's a Word document, and that can be used a very low tech printed out copy. And then we have a PowerPoint that's a companion. And depending on the jurisdiction, you may not be able to use the PowerPoint for you know, technological region, reasons, or you may just choose to use the PowerPoint. Um, and also what I'll point out with that for this presentation, the slides may be, be a little bit wordy or hard to read just because we're we're documenting what our checkup is, and they're not necessarily um, PowerPoint um, preferred slides. So bear with me on that. Um, okay. So um, the next um, section is going to be our local government perspectives, and we've invited Kathy Billmeyer, former town manager at um, Town of Galena. Currently, she's with um, Kent County Planning Department. And Calvin Bonenberger Jr., who's the town administrator at Town of Rising Sun. And we've asked um, both of them to kind of give uh, an experience of, of their um, daily work in, in the planning sphere. So I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Kathy and let her give you an overview. Great, um, thanks Dave. Um, and thanks for, you know, you know, the, the introduction and inviting me to this, uh, to be a part of this webinar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Kathleen Billmeyer. I am a former town manager, planning and zoning uh, coordinator. Uh, I was in code enforcement and a grant writer for the town of Galena in Kent County, Maryland. Um, population for Galena's, um, 614 uh, when I left. Um, I am currently working for um, Kent County Government in Chestertown, Maryland as their permit specialist. Um, so here's a little bit of uh, a bit of my background that I'd like to share with you and my experience uh, as being a zoning coordinator in the town of Galena. A good friend of mine reached out to me to see if I could help, you know, two days a week and answering the phones and filing as a current assistant uh, requested some time off. 
Three months later, the assistant resigned and the mayor asked if I would stay on and work for five days part-time. And I agreed to this position. Three months later, the town manager retired and the mayor asked me if I would fill the position. Uh, I declined as I had no experience or the skill or the knowledge of the trade. The council advertised and hired a town manager. Unfortunately, after one and a half months, the position was open again. That person took a position in Guam. The mayor came back to me and asked me to fill the position as town manager, zoning coordinator, code enforcement, and grant writer. And after much thought and a lot of persuasion, I did accept the, the position. However, I did not know all the responsibilities and the requirements that came with this job. One of the first tasks as zoning, uh, as a zoning coordinator, was the draft, was to draft three zoning ordinances. Uh, one was parking regulation. The second was prohibiting the, the obstruction of um, fire hydrants. And third, keeping backyard chickens. chickens. Mind, Mind you, you, I had no experience of writing an ordinance, let alone about raising chickens. Even though I'm a farm girl by, by way back when, but raising chickens was not one of them. The town of Galena did not have any guidelines or processes on how to accomplish these everyday projects. It took me eight months of researching writing drafts of the ordinance, meetings with the mayor and the town attorneys, and then to present the drafts to plan and zoning. Then there's a the process of approvals, public notices, and then there's public hearings that were all new to me. My experience with these were daunting. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was. Not knowing the order of the process, who, who needs to be contacted, and the paperwork that was involved. The only tools that I knew to use were Google, and I found eCode 360 on the town's website. No one told me that I could have reached out to the Maryland um, Planning for Assistance, such as Dave Dalsham, or that there was like Dave Dalsham an MD planning um, or, or a website that I could have used at that time to reach out. I can honestly say that um, this was a huge learning experience for me and I could have not done it without the assistance from Dave Dahlstrom. And for that, I'm very grateful for. My next hurdle was updating the town of, of Galena's zoning ordinance that was not done since 1997. That was the first time it's ever been done and it's never been revised until now. By this time, I had a few meetings with Dave and one very important question Dave asked me, actually was one of the first ones he asked me was where is the town zoning map? And he's already, he already explained this, you know, why isn't this viewed in the town hall? While I could not answer his questions, we found the zoning map and noticed, yes, you guessed it, it was never signed. So, our work began with restructuring, reorganizing, and updating. Starting from scratch, typing the document as there is no digital documents available. David also helped me with the process of gathering items and placing them in order, which took many months, many long nights, and many weekends in getting this all together. Once completed, the planning and zoning members began the process of reviewing the draft of the land ordinance in their monthly meetings, a section at a time. As you can imagine, this was a very long and tedious process to achieve. In 2020, before the pandemic hit, I suggested a meeting on Saturday mornings to review the draft while everybody was fresh and awake. This was very beneficial for everyone and it was so much easier to manage. I was very, I am very happy to announce 
that the land ordinance was officially approved by June 2020. Well, one of, one of my last tasks that I worked in the town of Galena, David and I uh, started the process of updating the comprehensive plan from 2009 to 2022. The town hired uh, a consultant for this project um, and I found a grant to pay for half of the consulting costs through the Upper Shore Regional Council. I would like to suggest from my experience that every municipality sh could and should be able to benefit from these guidelines and a process of what is required in, for example, writing a land ordinance. For example, knowing the responsibility and the requirements of, of the planning and zoning position would be so Kathy, helpful. I'm having um, difficulty um, with your connection. Ooh. I don't know if anyone else did. How far back do I got to go back? <laughs> I can, I've, I've been able to hear Kathleen clearly, okay. but that could just be. Okay. Is anybody else having that? Is any other panelists having that difficulty? No, I, no, I was able to hear Kathleen clear. Okay. Me too. Okay. Oh, great. You can cut that part out. <laughs> um, so in closing, I would like to suggest from my experience that uh, every municipality um, could benefit from having a set, um, a set of guidelines and a process of what is required in writing a land ordinance. For example, knowing the responsibility and requirements of the planning zoning position. David Dahlstrom is a great asset to the town of Galena in making sure the right items were in place, crossing our T's and making sure our I's were dotted. Um, David has been the exception to me as without his knowledge and giving his generous time, helping me with all the projects that were given, uh, that were required of me Glena would not be where they are today. Thanks, Dave. Well, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that very much. Sure. Um, and then we're going to move on to Calvin Bonenberger, Town Administrator for Rising Sun, for some of his perspectives. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for allowing me to participate um, in this endeavor. I think it's vitally important. Um, I guess uh, I'll go into a little bit of my background. Um, I have been serving with the town administrator since 2007. Um, I've actually been in municipal government for over 40 years. Um, I've served in a variety of positions. I've uh, been both a borough manager, a director of code enforcement, planning, zoning, land development. Um, my uh, my experience uh, spreads uh, from the state of Pennsylvania to Maryland. Um, I spent my first uh, roughly 25 years in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, where I was also a state licensed wastewater treatment operator, a fire chief, assistant fire marshal, emergency management. And right now I'm actually also serving as a state uh, assistant fire marshal inspector for the state of Maryland. Um, so I, I, I have a, a pretty comprehensive understanding and knowledge of all aspects of municipal government, but that also uh, gets me in a little bit of uh, trouble at the same time, because maybe sometimes ignorance is bliss um, when you're trying to complete projects. Um, just like Kathy, um, I am very uh, grateful to David Dalshaw. Um, we, I, we often get together and, and I almost, I sort of look at it as Dr. Frankenstein going into the laboratory and creating these wild ideas of how to deal with the issues that uh, face the town of Rising Sun. And, and Dave and I have some fantastic conversations about philosophically how to handle uh, the different issues that our town has faced. And I say that because it's important to, uh, as Kath, Kathleen had said, to reach out to the state agencies for help. And when you get, you know, individuals such as Joe and Dave 
they're invested in this and they will be just as creative and just as passionate as you uh, you need them to be and, and as much as you may or may not be. So they're a fantastic um, resource for you to uh, utilize. Um, when I first came to the town of Rising Sun, um, my story is a little bit more out of a Hollywood script, so to speak. Um, I've often joked about uh, writing a book about some of the experiences because um, this is uh, a town that um, actually is part of the Mason-Dixon line controversy. If you remember sitting in high school or middle school, junior high, and learning about the uh, history of the United States, you've heard about the Mason-Dixon line. Well, the town of Rising Sun actually used to be in Chester County, Pennsylvania. And some of the original land records uh, going back to the late 1700s and early 1800s are actually in the courthouse of Chester County. And to use sort of a, a baseball metaphor, um, I always like to say that the town of Rising Sun was traded from Pennsylvania to Maryland for a municipality to be named later. Um, but that, that's where we got our roots from, is where we actually came from Pennsylvania. Um, the challenges that the town faced is uh, the town of Rising Sun is on the other side of the Susquehanna River. It's all the way up in the northern corner of uh, Maryland. It sort of operates and, and operates under its own sheet music and marches to its own drum. Um, when I came here in 07, people do not like change uh, here, especially when you have these small municipalities. And when you think about you know, your counties and you look at a municipality that's a significant dis distance away from the other incorporated towns, they have a tendency to start to operate like on an island by them, themselves. So as a result of that, it also opens you up to a lot of bad things that can happen. Um, we had a lot of bad developers. We had developers before I came here paying to get protests and we now have failing septics all over the place uh, in and around the county. Um, so we've had some bad developers. We um, had water and sewer issues that the town, because the mentality is we're on an island by uh, themselves, they just decided to uh, ignore any directives coming uh, from the Maryland Department of the Environment and ended up having to be put into consent decrees. We had a town attorney who actually was serving as a developer under a fictitious name and was representing other developers. So I say that to you because our land development code and zoning code and zoning maps were just an absolute mess because people- at that Can I interrupt you right there? Yeah. And just, um, we're kind of running a little bit long. Okay. And so just on that point, how many zoning maps did you have when I got there? Um, we had four different zoning maps. Um, and the funny thing is some of the zoning maps, the roads didn't even connect with each other. Uh, they weren't even connected together. So uh, yeah, we had four different zoning maps in operation at one time. All right, so yeah, that's a very big challenge. Well, I'll ask both of you before we, we I have to move on so I can get five minutes for the last part of this. Okay. Um, so do you think when we went through this process, your planning commissioners learned anything through it? Do you think they're better able to um, understand their code and um, make recommendations and to critique development proposals that come in? Um, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is this was a great opportunity for our planning commission to learn because we had been in a sewer and water moratorium for so long over 15 years at that point that they never dealt with any applications before them. So this basically was going back to planning and zoning 101 and looking at each code section one at a time. So it was great for them to go through that process. Do, do either of you have any type of, of um, educational training for your planning commissioners when they join or do they just get handed a copy of the code and welcome to the planning commission? Kathy? Um, for the town of Galena, what we, um, we went on 
what I well what I found was on the Maryland planner's site that there was a course to take and I recommended the council to take that and then um, it's then when we redid the the land ordinances all the um, council was there to go through each each section so everybody could be familiarized of what was going on what what did they you know approved what did they want to you know toss out that's the only thing that um, council had All right. Well, thank you. I'm going to have to move on to the next one because we're, we're, we're sure. running out of time. Um, but I wanted to show kind of a sample of what the zoning check is, checkup is to the group. On the left side, you have, it's a Word document, the zoning checkup. We have a Word version. It'll be long and wordy. And on the right side, we have a PowerPoint slide and the two work together. Um, but the PowerPoint slide is intended to be, if you're in a group, you can Put it on the wall so you can follow along with it while you're you have your word document you can't actually you know write on a powerpoint presentation but you can write on a word document if you've printed it out so we have the two you can use either both of them you can use one or the other um, but that's what we're doing and we're using this presentation as part of um, as, as an outline for um, what we have in the in the zoning checkup so I'll go in the next slide too. You know, go to the word document on the left, table of contents. Um, you know, the the purpose. We talked about the purpose. Then we have a section on how to use the zoning checkup. Then we have the list of topics and in, in item B. I know it's a little bit fuzzy here, but the four core topics: um, preserving your zoning map, your zoning code, and map changes and such. Then we also have um, an appendix. The appendix would have the complete zoning checkup. And then we also have what's a list of planning acronyms. Joe uh, Rogers had created a list of planning acronyms for another project. We thought it'd be good to incorporate it in this so that we could share with local governments. When it's ready, you guys can look at that list and you can share other acronyms that we don't have in there. Or maybe they're, um, some of them we're going to have are going to be Maryland centric, like priority funding area. But you may have some in your state that you may want to add, um, but it would be intended. So any jurisdiction that said, you know, what did I mean, I've had planners ask me what's, you know, what's net density or what's what's DU um, slash AC mean um, and these different things. So uh, we, we'll have an appendix for different topics. A lot of the appendices are Maryland centric, but then we have additional topics that will work. And these are going to be, you know, specific topic areas like block sizes or missing middle housing. As I was going through this presentation, I thought um, grandfathering might be a topic that we need to um, incorporate. So if you think of other topic areas um, that we have, please share them with us. And that's our intent is that this, this list is um, will change over time. So then, um, you know, the, the, the sample, um, Zoning checkup, you can see here's the purpose. It's a lot more detailed than the slide that I showed you. And then how to use the checkup. There's a list that says, you know, create a work group who can be on the work group and then needed, needed documents. So here's all the things that you're going to need to start this. And so it's a lot more detail about how to do this before you start. And then, um, um, you know, so what you can see at the, the top of this worksheet you know, um, preserving the official zoning map, there's a slide, a companion slide that you could post on, on, you know, on your display that the audience could look at, but you're looking at this document and it has more detail in it. And then um, on the more the center of the page, you start getting a list of questions, yes or no questions and some fill in the blanks. And then the, there's a PowerPoint slide that just lists the questions so people can see you, how you're following along. And once you've done this a couple of times, you may just want to use what's on the on the PowerPoint slide. So preserving the official zoning map means that you meet the specific requirements outlined in your adopted zoning code and that it's meticulously updated and all members of the public have access to the document. And you know, so then we say, well, let's start this process by finding and evaluating your, your official zoning map. So the questionnaire starts with. Does your work group and your work group can be, you know, whoever it's your planning commission, maybe it's um, staff or a variety. Do you have a copy of the zoning ordinances? Because you need to have that. And then 
can you locate the map identified as the official zoning map? And that's like the first question that I asked Kathy and Calvin. And, and if so, where is it? Um, and if no, you might want to talk to your attorney about what you can do about those types of things. So um, our last, last poll question is if you're a public planning agency or a public or a zoning authority, is your zoning code available in a digital format? A, yes, B, no, and C, not sure. And as Kathy mentioned, when we did the zoning update for Galena, there was no Word document. So we had to take the document. She took half, I took the other half, and we had to go type it because we tried to do optical scan and it didn't work. Same with Calvin with his comprehensive plan. He had a comprehensive plan, but his consultant had the document, the word, the digital document. <laughs> so we had to go find it. So, um, so I encourage you, if you don't have a digital copy of it, find out where it is and how you're going to get it or, or, or try to get that. So do we have the poll closed yet? Yes. All right. Wow. You guys are lucky. We're about 50-50 on that. So, okay. So next question in the in the zoning would be, um, is your official zoning map displayed in a publicly accessible location, easy visible to the public? If yes, where is it? If no, can you find a location? Where should it be? Perhaps your, even, your zoning code might even specify where it needs to be. And then does the ordinance um, have an official zoning map section, yes or no? And then it says, see example A. And so I'll go to the next slide, which is example A. And if you pulled up your zoning code, here's a section that says the official zoning map, then you can go read what it says about it. And then, you know, so we're saying list the ordinance number and then list the requirements that it might have. And it might say, it needs to say the following, it needs to be certified, it needs to have a stamp, it needs to have this text in it, it needs to be signed by the mayor. There's a whole plethora of things that could be. And so what we do is we give examples, like here, in, go to example B, and it'll say on this date, on official action of the town commissioner, the following, you know, that needs to be on there. It needs to have, you know, certain things, you know, what is it? And then compare this text with your map. And do they say, do they, are they, you know, 100% consistent? Um, and does it have a signature block? So I'll go to section C, and this is a map that Calvin provided me for Rising Sun. It does have a signature block. Um, so so you check to see, and so what we'll do is we have examples of where you can see on the map that it's done. And then does it have an effective date? Sometimes it asks for effective date. I apologize for the clarity on the on the left, but this one says effective date May 7th, but the signature is February 26th of, of the same year. So sometimes the effective date and the date of, of signature aren't the same, but you know from zoning, that the effective date is when those policies are effective. So anyone that came in before is grandfathered. And you know, we, we always have different interpretations of what grandfathering means. So our next steps is that you know um, we are preparing um, these documents for final. We'd love to get any feedback you have, and then we're going to be publishing it on the MVP website, hopefully at the, be the beginning of um, 2023 if we're lucky by the end of this year, but I think it's more going to be like January. And then we'll keep on adding topics as we go. Joe, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, Dan, I think that was it. We're just trying to get, you know, some clearer images. And like you discussed, it's going to be the, the Word document's going to go along with the PowerPoint. So it'll kind of be like an encyclopedia of, of planning needs and chapters. And then uh, different locals will be able to pick and choose what subject areas they want. And then the Word document will kind of follow along with it. Mm -hmm. Um, with the presentation as a guide. All right. So even though this is this is really intent, you know, geared for to fit Maryland towns, we think, as Joe um, Griffith said, anyone on Atlantic Seaboard, even nationally, could probably utilize this. You just have to adjust it for your particular um, jurisdiction and maybe specific requirements. But in general, you should be able to um, utilize this. And then. With this, we'll just take any final questions that that we may have. Um, it looks like we um, one comment just you know says this checkup is excellent and expresses gratitude. Um, another 
attendee at, asks for the panelists to address solar development. If solar you have farms, yeah, that was a big issue, especially here on the shore. So, um, Jillian, I'm seeing some chat things. Are there are there questions in the chats? There was just um, a chat item from Joseph Griffiths himself, time permitting question. If a jurisdiction finds that it has significant issues with zoning ordinances, what should it do? Freak out? <laughs> Call us. <laughs> then you freak out. But I mean, it, it's, it's a, you know, it takes a long time to go through this, but you have to start, you know, any journey has to start and um, you can't be caught flat footed. You know, a lot of these jurisdictions are just so, um, you know, like Kathleen, she, you know, she started one job and then it was kind of handed to her. And Calvin always says, you don't know what you don't know. And um, so you got to start. Don't freak out. Get some help. Um, you're not the only one. There's, there are probably many worse cases out there than, than your jurisdiction. But, you know, it's your responsibility as a jurisdiction to um, to make sure that your government is running and peak performance that when someone comes has a, a zoning question there's not a whole bunch of questions the planning board can't be looking at themselves saying what do we do when someone's trying to get an answer so that's all i have to say and i want to thank everybody um, for participating and if you need to contact us here's my um my email, david.dahlstrom at maryland.gov, and I'll be happy to um, you know, share any comments or questions you have with any of the panelists and get back to you. Thank you. And I would like to just add as well, um, the contact information of all the um, speakers will also be going out in the attendee follow-up email that will go out in a couple of days, um, along with links to the presentation slide deck. Um, but keep your eyes peeled on the YouTube page for when this recording um, is posted. But otherwise, thank you everyone for joining and thank you to all of our speakers. Um, APA Virginia really appreciates your contribution. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, panelists. Thank you.